Hello, and welcome back to Red Band Trailer. I'm Diablo Cody, and I'd like to thank you all for tuning in to previous episodes. Thanks to the support of viewers like you, I've decided to renew my own show. The numbers are strong, and the host is turning out to be a real charmer. Today's guest has a very small waist and a very bright future. Her name's Megan Fox, I love her, and I'm very excited she's chosen to grace us with her presence today. Recently, Megan made some controversial remarks about a very powerful person. I'm talking about Kelly Ripa. We'll discuss all this and more in the Red Band trailer. Come inside for a ride. Don't hide from me. From me. <laughs> is this funny to you? Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah. You're so huge right now and you're really pulling it off. <laughs> and you're still you're still being productive and doing things. I yeah. thought you meant like huge in the industry. Well, that also. Yeah. But I just meant like around. Like, like physically yeah. huge. Enormous. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> you are from the South. Mm hmm And a lot of people in this town who, who work in the business mm -hmm. are sort of native Angelinos who grew up connected. Do you feel like an outsider having come here and kind of done it by yourself? A lot of people come from like Ohio, they're like corn fed. There are a lot of those, like Luke Perry, for example, grew up on a farm. Luke Bam. Perry? I had a dream about him the other night where I was, my house was being robbed and I ran out the back onto the porch and I was screaming for help and Luke Perry came out of the woods in a flannel shirt with a shotgun and saved my house from being broken into. I've heard that's a really common dream, like falling. <laughs> um, oh, sorry, I probably shook the camera. Um, no, I don't feel like an outsider. I mean, I feel like I, I, this place is so strange. Everyone, everyone is sort of strangers. Even the people that you end up knowing always sort of feel like strangers to me, at least in the industry. But you've been in the industry a very long time, correct? I guess it was eighteen. You started at eighteen. Yeah. Why and was, you was this, I thought you were younger than that. No, I was 18. So, 17, turning 18. Was it a completely autonomous decision? You decided you wanted to be an actress? I told I wanted to be an actress from the time I was two. I told my mom I was going to be an actress. And that's all I ever wanted to do. And then you sort of struck out and did it on your own at 17? Yeah, my mom had to come with me because she didn't want to leave me alone when I was 17 because I was a lunatic. So she came out until I turned 18. Did you guys stay home. at the Oakwood? We fucking did. Oh my god, I was just guessing that. <laughs> no, I did. <laughs> Those of you who don't know, the Oakwood is this sort of famous furnished apartment complex mm -hmm. in Burbank where where a lot of actors and child stars kind of go when they're starting their careers. I was at the Oakwood when Frankie Munoz had just left. Shia LaBeouf was leaving and Hilary Duff would come there on the weekends and everybody would have like hot tub parties. I was there. Hot tub Duff. <laughs> You did a little movie called Holiday in the Sun. I did. With the Olsen twins. I did. What was that like? Were they always singing Brother for Sale? <laughs> they, um, they're nice. They're nice girls. They're very... The first time I had ever been around someone really famous was them. And they were... We were kids. I was like 17. I guess I was younger. You're right. I was about 15. I lied to you. I was 15 and they were about 15. And um, I saw how awkward and I don't mean this in a bad way, socially they were with large groups of people or with people in general because they had, they've been famous their whole lives and been looked at their whole lives. And it's the first time I ever, it was very, I didn't understand why anyone would be like that. I, I had no understanding of, of why you would shut down and be afraid and have all these sort of phobias. And then as it happens to you, you sort of develop them and become crazy. And you were you were the baddie in that movie, correct? The villain? I was. Do you feel that that was early typecasting? Because people seem to see you as like a vixen. Yeah, I guess. I, I mean, I think I just sort of fell into that really because I had, and, and the first time I was a dark haired girl against the two blonde sweet like girl next door types. And I've always had a, I don't know what kind of look it is that I have, but it's a some sort of look that makes people think I'm a, I'm a bitch. What narrow minded so. asshole would cast you as a bitch against an innocent looking blonde? <laughs> Okay, so then you did Hope and Faith. Yes, I did. With Kelly Ripa Consuelos. I did. Who I'm obsessed with. Yeah, I have a crush on her. I never told her that. <laughs> she might I, find out. Yeah, it'd probably be really uncomfortable, but I always did. So, fast forward, you're a movie star now. Okay. 
I think being famous is a very weird thing for most people. Yeah. And you discussed how the Olsen twins, you know, at, at a young age already had to kind of armor themselves. Mm -hmm. And then you found as you got older that you understood how that could happen. Yeah. So do you feel like you've been mistreated, misquoted? Do you feel like you've had a, a, a crappy experience in the limelight or do you feel positive about it overall? I would never call it a crappy experience. I think those are all such different different things. Misquoted, not so much misquoted as just the things I say being taken completely out of context or, or sort of sensationalized and made into something scandalous when they weren't. They're just, they, they, everyone, they're waiting for anything they can take to make into a sound bite to sell. And it doesn't matter if what your intention behind your words were. That never really gets communicated by journalists anymore. Um, so it's hard to be sarcastic. Do you not find this? Has this not happened to oh you Oh my yet? god, absolutely. I have, okay. no, I have this theory that it must have been like incredibly fun to be a celebrity in like the 70s. Right. Because there wasn't the soundbite culture. Right. There wasn't the tabloid culture. Yeah. You could, there, you would see these interviews that were like 17 page profiles in Rolling Stone where you really got to, right. to know a person and now it, it comes down to like, oh, we have to keep 8 million websites rolling, so what did this one person say today that we can right. clip? Yeah. It's, it makes it impossible to be even an individual. I don't feel like I even want to express myself when I sit down to do, especially print interviews, because I know that everyone's constantly searching for an angle, and they're, they're searching for the four words that they can piece together to make some sort of explosive soundbite. It's happened to me, it happens to me sort of more often. Once it started happening, I didn't step back and go, I need to, you know, I need to really watch myself because I need to play by the rules. I think that I just sort of kept going and sort of being myself, hoping that the industry would change with me and that didn't yeah. happen. I have a theory about you. Now, I don't know okay. you very well, but I think you're a genuinely weird person. <laughs> Thanks. I think you're a very strange, eccentric, weird woman. And yeah. I, d I don't think that the press or the public can reconcile weird with beautiful. I guess. And so they just go straight to like entitled or mouthy or something. Right. right. But like, I just think you're like Crispin Glover weird <laughs> and nobody can <laughs> figure out how you can be that beautiful and also uh, that strange. There's no fixing that though. There's no. Yeah. It doesn't get better. I just sort of, I have to adapt a little, a little. I hear ya. Or else I'm just not going to survive it. Well, I want to thank you for coming. <laughs> I nice. want to thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, would you like to go play a price guessing game up at the Tiki Bar? Fuck yeah, I would. All right, cool. Let's go. Okay. Hello, and welcome to The Cost is Correct, the game show where we see if celebrities know how much everyday items cost. Now, we have to see if you can actually keep it real or if you're too cool for school. I'm keeping it real. You have no choice. And let's start the game. First item we have is lava soap which is like pumice, so... It's the soap for punishing Catholics. Right, you can tell you're clean if it hurts. 69 cents. Fair. I'm going to say it is 2.79. And the actual retail price is 1.99, closest without going over, and I like you, so you get it. <laughs> All right. Next, we have close-up toothpaste. These are really practical items. My grandmother used to use that. This is the makeout toothpaste. She was getting down. Okay, what do you think? Um, a dollar forty. I'm gonna say a dollar eighty-eight. And it is actually ninety-nine cents, which means usually you would both lose. But again, I like you, so you get it. I'm having a terrible time. Yeah. Third item is my favorite one. Legs. Good legs every day, which look okay on me. Didn't they used to come in an egg? Right. Yeah. That's, why an egg. That's why they were called legs. <laughs> I'm gonna go with. $3.99. I'm going to say there's $7. What? And the there's actual... There's 10 pairs. Oh, there's 10 pairs. And the actual retail price is $8.49. Oh, Very wow. good. Very good. Steep. Fourth item we have is a relic called <gasps> Jennifer's Bot. Look at that. It stars a comely ingenue named Megan Fox. I'd pay a lot of money for that. And it was written by <laughs> Golden Globe loser Diablo Cody. $12.99. You did already fucking know the prices of this stuff. Shh. That isn't it. What did you say? Thirteen dollars. Twelve ninety nine. I'll say a penny more. And <laughs> it's fifteen ninety nine. Ooh, you took it. I think we're School. tied. Yes, two to two. Okay, this is probably the most important one. 
castor oil, which is a laxative, or as some people call it, a meal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take this after we're done because it's supposed to induce labor. Is it? Yeah. I mean, you get explosive diarrhea. What if you don't have time to clean it up and then you start giving birth that's not sanitary? You could give your baby some sort of you know, that's fucked up disease. The hospital's problem. What if you don't make it there? Then I'll have one of those toilet babies like on the Discovery Health Channel. <laughs> Four twenty. Five dollars. And the retail price is four ninety nine. You won. You win. <laughs> what do I get? What'd you win? You know what? Funny enough, you do win something. Oh, you're gonna like this. This. Yes. Hold on, I can talk to you. I don't think we have the rights to this song. I, mean, I don't know if you can turn it off. Did you just take it away from her? What? You did, you well, did. I, I did. I, you can have it later. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Kelly Ripper, Kelly Ripper, well, for some reason, our special guest, Megan Fox, decided to leave her Frankie the Fish here. I don't know why. It's such an amazing prize. Anyway. I think we're all permanently transformed by our experience in the Red Band trailer today. Until next time, take care, and it's not your fault. Kelly Ripper, Kelly Ripper,